Hi, welcome to the last and final lecture of EC141. In this lecture, we will talk about trellis coded modulation. Sorry, <coughs> trellis coded modulation. There you go. So, what is trellis coded modulation? Uh, let's recall our discussion on bandwidth limited communication channels. If you have linear codes and convolutional codes, your transmission bit rate, as you see here, increases to accommodate your parity bits while maintaining the data rate. That's from this formula. Your data rate is a fraction of the transmission rate. It's because we use, we're using extra bits for reliable communication. That means we have a reduced data rate when we compare it to transmission rate. So if we want to maintain the same data rate, we need to increase the transmission rate, transmission bit rate, for us to have the same data rate and have reliable communication. If you increase data rate, increase the bandwidth uh, used for your transmission. For example, suppose we're using an uh, uncoded 4PSK, which achieves a spectral efficiency of 2. For a BER of 10 to the minus 6, the required SNR is 10.5 decibels. But in coding, we attempt to reduce the SNR per bit for the given BER without increasing bandwidth. We don't want to increase bandwidth. We don't want to waste bandwidth, of course. So if we're using coding and our bandwidth is limited, then we must reduce our data rate. Okay. We maintain the same transmission rate, but our data rate is reduced. And uh, if we use coding, say you have a 2 to 3 rate, 2 thirds rate for PSA constellation, your QPSK becomes an 8 PSK, as you see here. You maintain the data rate, okay? You maintain the data rate using that uh, setup for a coded PSK, but the downside is to get an, uh, an SNR per bit. For a BR of 10 to the minus 6, uh, you need a 4 dB increase approximately in power. This 4 dB must be compensated by the coding gain gained from the 2 thirds code, from the 2 3 code. Okay. So, oops, there you go. So, well, if you use um, a 4 PSK constellation, the required SNR is, oh, sorry, the distance rather, minimum distance between symbols is this. For an 8PSK, it's this. And uh, the uh, ratio between them, the power difference between them, again, dependent on the minimum distance, is 5.38 dB. By using an 8PSK, uh, constellation instead of a 4 PSK, you incur a 5.38 decibel SNR loss. Okay. So what about for 4 ASK to 8 ASK? Around 6.22 decibel loss. The coding gain must overcome this for it to work, for, for, for you to not lose anything at all. Okay. The solution to that problem is to combine the modulation and encoding process to increase the minimum distance between pairs of coded signals. So ultimately, the goal is still to increase the minimum distance by combining the modulation and encoding process. We'll be able to increase the minimum distance of a symbol mapping like this and like this. We can increase the minimum distance between them by combining these processes. So in this way here, coded transmission will overcome the SNR per bit loss using relatively simple codes. Right. But the first step is to partition the constellation. For example, let's partition the 8PSK constellation. We choose a subset of symbols that will have a um, more, sorry, you have more distance between symbols. Okay. So that's how you partition an 8PSK. 
you subdivide it into two sets of four and the minimum distance between these two sets should be well greater than the minimum distance that it experiences here so intuitively you'll have you will get the one on the axis that's one set and the other would be not on the axis from this minimum distance your minimum distance becomes this one and you assign a bit to them okay for this the uh, least significant bit is zero for this the least significant bit is one and you further partition them right here the one with zero will be partitioned into two sets as you see here and this becomes zero zero this becomes one zero so you add a bit here a more significant bit into the one that's originally assigned to the partition same is true with the other side and you get this okay there you go <clears throat> so your message bits uh, to perform trellis coded modulation this will be your setup you uh, use k1 message bits and encode that using a binary encoder preferably a convolu convolutional code okay. and you result into n bits from these uh, n bits you will select a subset or a partition okay, based on the value of the output of the encoder and the other k2 bits message bits you will select a, a point from that subset so for example if you have a state if you're using a let's say if your current output rather or your current yeah your current output is say one zero zero so the first the last two bits rather okay, right here this is zero zero this will be uh, the ones that we will use to decide what partition to get so zero zero corresponds to this constellation and this bit one would represent either one of the two points within that partition okay so that's how you perform trellis code modulation and because of this you create parallel transitions in your state diagram okay so let's have an example to illustrate that so, so in this example, we have a 212 convolutional coder that encodes this least significant bit that you see right here and converts it into two bits. The other one is used directly right here. Effectively, you have a 2-3 rate convolutional code. Basically, a 3-2-2 convolutional code. Just a note that k1 here is equal to 1. That's your least significant bit input. And k2 also 1 because you also have one bit that determines which point from the subset you're going to get. Okay. The constellation partitions using your APSK looks like this. So the corresponding state, state trellis diagram is what you see here below. If you start at the zero zero state, you can go towards the one zero state and zero zero state. The output when your input is zero is either zero 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 or one zero zero. Okay. If you look at the uh, two least significant bits, it corresponds to the partition C zero. That's why the shorthand notation for writing the trellis diagram right here is also C0. If you're uh, going to transition towards the state 10, then the possible outputs are <coughs> 010 and 110. That transitions to, or that corresponds rather, this 10 right here to state R partition c2 okay so there you go that's the trellis diagram it results into parallel transitions right here okay. 
So each transition from this original trellis diagram will have two possible states or two possible transitions. Okay, and each of this output corresponds to a symbol that you see from this input or from this uh, set right here. Okay, so to maximize the Euclidean distance, the following rules must be followed. Your parallel branches are mapped into signals from the last partition to maximize the distance between symbols in a partition. So within a partition, you have the maximum minimum distance okay, between all of your symbols within a partition. Particularly in this example, in this uh, setup right here, the distance between each symbol is 2 squared of E. All branches which originate from a state are mapped onto signals from the same partition and all signals will appear with equal probability. So to solve for the minimum distance between trellis paths, first you take the minimum non-zero trellis path. So you start from zero, zero, and the non-zero non trellis, the minimum, is when you transition towards one zero right here, which gradually fades into fades back into the zero zero state. So you will see here an output on the zero path is zero, C zero, and the output on the non-zero path is C2. So C0 has a mapping that looks like this. C2 has a mapping that looks like this. If we overlap them together, this is what you get. And the minimum distance between them, square root of 2e. That's why the distance at the first uh, transition is square root of 2e. <coughs> From here, C1 to C0, C1 again looks like this sorry c0 rather c1 looks like this the minimum distance between them is what you see right here and finally c2 right here is what we got earlier equal to square root of 2e and the minimum distance between trellis paths is the sum of the squares okay? and you take the square root of that that is the minimum distance okay? and now to evaluate the reliability you need to look at the non-zero trellis path and also the minimum distance within a partition. The minimum distance between two symbols in the lowest level partition is 2 square root of E. See here? And that corresponds to a, a square of 4E. Between this and the previous result right here, get the minimum distance between them. That is the minimum distance within your trellis coded modulation. Okay. So the uncoded 4PSK example has a minimum distance of 2E. You see here, that means the minimum distance, even if we have the same bandwidth and the same uh, data rate, okay, the minimum distance in your trellis coded modulation is still, the power rather, is twice or sorry, the minimum distance is twice that of the uncoded case. That means a coding gain of 3 decibels is achieved using this trellis-coded modulation. Now, how do we decode the trellis-coded modulation? It's the same as your convolutional code. Since it's based on a convolutional code, you'll have to use Viterbi algorithm for that. But first, since you have parallel transitions, Okay. Since you have parallel transitions and your symbols are dependent on the symbol constellation, you have to redefine your cost function. It will now look like this. You have an imaginary uh, sorry, in phase part in a quadrature part. Okay. And uh, <coughs> using this, you retain the branch with the minimum distance, the same as your Viterbi algorithm. So from your parallel branches, once you've uh, determined which branch has the minimum distance, then uh, the other branches will collapse or basically just ignore them. Okay. Better to illustrate that with an example. Let's say we have your same 8PSK constellation with 
a 2 1 2 convolutional code, let your receive signal be what you see here. Okay. So, uh, just a note when we talk about 0, that's 0, 0, 0. 7 is 1, 1, 1. Okay. 6 would be 0, 1, uh, 1, 1, 0, rather, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, if your bit is 0, 0, 0, then your PSA symbol is this. If it's 0, 0, 1, your PSA symbol is this, and so on, until you complete the constellation mapping. You look at the different received signals, okay, and check their distance from the different PSK symbols. Okay, since at the first, uh, you start at the C0 state, or the 0, 0 state rather, you'll only evaluate uh, this, this, uh, this, and this. Okay? And it turns out that if, when you compute the minimum distance or the distance between the PSK symbol, you'll get a minimum right here, right here. For the next symbol, you have a minimum here and here, here and here. Okay? Uh, you have a minimum here, 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 and here. There you go. Okay. Minimum here, 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 and here, and so on and so forth. So why do you have a lot of minimums? You will look at, you will compare rather, the ones in the same partition. Comparing this 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0 has a larger or a smaller distance rather than 1, 0, 0. That's why we eliminate this path. And on the 1, 0 partition, this symbol right here has a, a smaller distance. That's why we eliminate this path. In the next uh, transition, you compare 0, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 0. You'll see that this one will be eliminated here and this one eliminated here and this one this one is eliminated and so on and so forth so that's how you compare and that's how you determine which uh, branch will survive in the parallel transition from your trellis diagram okay so to solve for the surviving paths and branches so this is the first transition you go towards zero 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 or one zero and you get your minimum distance that you get you uh, use the minimum distance rather that you used here in the previous slide earlier okay and there you go so the next one transition to the next state and you add the uh the minimum distances that you got in the previous on this transition okay so you add the minimum distances you'll get these in total at the next stage you'll have some convergence so in, in some converging branches like you saw here earlier, it has a larger distance than this one. That's why it was eliminated. And you continue the process over and over again. There you go. Okay. You'll be left with an original path or uh, the path with the shortest distance rather. Okay. And it turns out it's the all zero code word. So that's the end of this lecture and the end of EC one for one. That's the last lecture of EC one for one. Thank you for listening. See you when I see you. <laughs>